Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've got a few shout outs today. I've had my first parcel, so I'll show you that. So somebody's been kind enough to send me a parcel. It's actually somebody I know. In fact, we'll do that first. Now, the first parcel I've been sent is from Jackie McPeat. It's a little footstool, because I was talking to her about a month ago and I said, if you ever see anywhere that's got an old fashioned footstool, then will you get it me? And she bought it, she parceled it up and sent it me as my first parcel on the channel. So thank you very much, Jackie. You're very kind and I will use that every single day. So again, thank you to Jackie McFeed. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, and I better mention Ian as well, because he'll only one if I don't mention him. That's her husband, Ian. That's my mate Ian, who's on the intro as it comes on that I made the first video, it shows a picture of Ian, he's the one that's cuddling treacle on the images. I wanted to talk to you today about, the other day I spoke about when you're choosing and how to choose your first puppy. Well some people don't go into buying a puppy because they don't want the mess with the peeing and the weeing in the house and all that pooing and all that. So what people sometimes do is they buy part trained dogs. Now sometimes that could be a minefield because if you come to buy a part trained dog chances are it's a kennel dog so it's not used to being in the house. Now a lot of people say oh as long as you get near the back door and keep taking it out you'll be fine. 99% of the time you will be fine but sometimes because of the use of kennels they're used to chewing a bit in the kennel so they could chew your kitchen so or your furniture so bear that in mind. Now but I would also say to you about buying a, pup, buying a part trained dog, you need to start looking straight away at the end of the shooting season. Because a lot of people wait until three quarters through summer, just before it gets to the shooting season. Oh, I want a part trained dog, I want to take it straight on shoot. So the problem is, all the best dogs from the end of the shooting season to the beginning of the next shooting season, they're all strapped up straight away. So what's left at the end isn't a bargain. It can have a lot of faults. So I suggest you don't buy near the end. Because remember, all those other people have had the option of buying that dog. Now, why haven't they bought that dog? That's a question you want to ask. Now, when you come to ring up the bloke to our woman to say, look, I've seen your advert for this part train dog. Can I come and see it? Oh, yes, yes, don't worry. You can come and see it, they'll say. When you get there, you want to see the pedigree. Make sure it is a good pedigree. If you're not sure, take somebody in a dog game with you that knows pedigrees and let him look at it. Now the problem is, sometimes when you get these part trained dogs, they've been taught really for the sale. So what will happen is about two to three weeks before the owner decides they're going to sell the, the part trained dog, they'll take it out in the paddock in the woodlands and they'll go over a routine till it's like butter, perfect. And then when you ring up, you'll say, well, can you demonstrate this dog? Oh yeah, of course I can, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you come, they take you through that routine that you've they've practiced, they don't tell you that. And by doing that, the dog's clockwork and you think, bloody hell, this dog's good. I'll buy it, boom, money on table. Well, the problem is when you take it home and you get it on fresh ground, you do completely the opposite of what you've been, what that dog's been shown by sending it a different area, different retrieves. He just can't do it. He'll just sit there, look at you as if to say, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's been a waste of money. So the way to find out if this dog's been clockwork is when the person's finished demonstrating, you say, right, this is what I want. And say what you want in different areas in their woodland or paddock and get them to demonstrate that dog. Now if it's a good dog, it'll do it 99.9 .9 right. If it's a dog that's been trained just to do what I've said, then it'll just fail at it. You must not buy that dog, walk away. You want to buy the dog, part trained dog, off a very good kennel. A good kennel that's won in competition. Now, when you've bought your dog, your part trained, trained dog, if you buy one, or you buy a puppy, then you'll want to do training. So a lot of people will book in for these training classes. 
Now I used to run training classes, I run a lot, but you can only spend a little bit of time on everybody within all them classes that you run. So you don't get that quality that you will get if you booked a one-to-one -one training with a, a good trainer. Now you see, sometimes you can come a cropper because if you book a one-to-one -one training session, it probably costs you 35, 40 quid. But to me, that's money well spent. I would never, ever go to a training class because there is a lot of unruly dogs that are there. End of day, the dogs that are going to them training classes are dogs that need training. Now, your dog, for association, could pick up some of them bad habits, which is absolutely true. So what I would say to you is, book a one-to-one -one training with a good trainer. Find a good trainer in the area that at least, at least has won a, either a field trial, a working test award at open level, run it into counties, Chatsworth, everything like that. You want somebody that's won a lot. Now, when you book this one-to-one -one training, what a lot of these trainers will do, they'll be like this for money. They'll say, right, well, I'll show you today what you need to do. And then if you come back next week, we'll do another one. And we'll do one every week over a six-month period or three-month period. And then we'll see how you're progressing. Walk away. Don't even entertain it. What he should say to you is quite simple. Right, you come today and I'll show you what you need to do at your level and when you go away you could take you a month to crack that because you don't have the experience you've got a month go through it all perfect that'll be 35 40 quid one-off payment and if it's a good training i'll say look if you get stuck through this training instead of booking in another one-to-one -to, -one to try and fix it i'll help you for free over the phone now that's what a proper trainer should do all right, so you want to look for somebody that's like that. I've always believed in that. 35, 40 pound for a one-to-one -one training is a lot of money in anybody's pocket. And I think you should go, go above and beyond for somebody that's spending that kind of money. Now, when you're ready to start doing the inter-counties when your training's done, I would start going to the competitions and just walking them around. Now, if you have a clear pigeon shoot anywhere near you, on a Sunday usually, then go along and just gently walk your dog all the way around so it gets used to the guns going off. But you must keep that dog on the lead. It is the requirement by law that all dogs have to be on the lead at a clear pigeon shoot. So just walk it round. Usually the gun shops run them. 